Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Laure Bonville. I'm one of the festival programmers. And we're delighted to have um, a bunch of great filmmakers uh, who made very personal and incisive uh, films. So please welcome Sam, who directed uh, The Wolf Suit. Hello. Uh, Ahmet, who directed uh, Les Enfants Terribles. Hello, hello. And Gide, who directed uh, When a Farm Goes a Flame. Hi. Um, what I was going to ask you all first is if you could uh, maybe briefly introduce your films and maybe why you made them, just see if the audience hasn't, hasn't seen, seen them yet. It's the why I've made it, that's the, the long answer, I'll try and, I'll try and be brief. Um, so my film um, uh, it started with a kind of dilemma of that I remember my childhood as being very happy before my dad left about the age of six and then my parents really weren't talking to each other at all and I was getting both their versions which were completely different from each other. I felt they were completely different. So um, I set out to make the film quite a long time ago and there was, it originated as a kind of fiction and then it developed into being a documentary. Uh, but it, basically during the course of the film I, I reconstruct scenes from, from that period from what I remember but also scenes from, from their stories with them on set. Um, discussing the scenes and we document that whole process. Um, and yes, why I make it, made it is I think, I think it was a central dilemma for me that was, that kind of opened up so many questions about how we remember and the, the idea of objective and truth and subjective truth. Thank you, Emmett. So the question, I mean, if I answer for the why, I, I still don't know why I have done it. But the film talks about my, uh, my brother and sister and they look for, to create their own way of living. One tries to go to a school and the other one is trying to get a divorce. And even if it sounds really simple, it's just all these complex cities within the family and outside of it created a film that I still don't know why I have done it. I, f I feel a bit the same way. Um, I couldn't shortly say why. Um, it's, it's, uh, my film is, is called When a Farm Goes a Flame and it's also a personal family story. Uh, I, I call it a divorce story or a love story. To me personally it was a film that I needed to make as, um, as a result of things happening with my work as a filmmaker. My, 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 my first documentary film as a director, um, Portrait of a Lone Farmer, was, um, was a film in which I, I portrayed the solitary life of my, my father in Nigeria. Uh, and doing this work led to things changing. Uh, and um, and the consequence of that was that I felt I had to make a new film, um, which was um, this this film, One of Ham Goes a Flame. Um, but but I, I I wouldn't I can't say exactly why uh, why people or why it needed to be made. But it was important for me to 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 get it right uh, or to try again to get it right, the, and make sense of the of our family story. So obviously your films have loads of similarities because they're dealing with families, but they also have loads of differences and obviously they've been made in different ways. So I might ask you slightly different questions. Um, so Sam, can you maybe talk about um, influencing the, the truths and memories by um, using reenactments and devices? Yeah, I, I, first can I just say, I think that question of why we, we've all made our films, I think it goes to the heart of why anyone makes a creative piece of work. And, and, and I think most filmmaking comes from a personal place. It's just whether you're totally upfront about that or not. So, so um, sorry, go back to the reconstructions. Um, so I originally got, well, I was originally very interested in memory but because it felt like a, a complication of memory was what started the film. And I got some funding from the Wellcome Trust very early on. And I was kind of interested in, in the different metaphors we use for memory and this kind of like, I think, um, in the past there's been the metaphor of, of recordings, you know, or even um, 
I think we get caught up in, in photographs as being kind of accurate recordings of, of, of our memories. But, but actually, I think in reality, reconstructing a scene, writing a scene based on events and reconstructing it is actually closer to the actual process of, of remembering, you know. I mean, and one of the, the other important things I kind of discovered was that actually you don't, you can't really form memories until you're five or six because you haven't learned to construct narrative. So those two things are, are totally tied together. And yet our memories, we feel like they're, they're you know, the truth and, and they are, are us and our identity and, and totally relate to real experience. And um, we're, we're all the time constructing our, our own jolly stories for all kinds of psychological reasons, you know. Does that answer that question? Yeah. Very, very well. And uh, G, do you also interrogate the past and memories? And so you use letters and you use film. And how were you interrogating that process as well? Like how much you were influencing the truth by you know, digging into the past and people's memories and being there and what, what difference it may have made that you were filming and you were interrogating that? Yeah, for me, um, maybe it wasn't so much about um, memories, but it was um, my pursuit was to try to get the people to, to um, speak about what they experienced when, when these, things in, these things in life um, happened, like... Um, so, so the story in my in my film is that um, my my father had um, um, led a, a double life, um, and uh, he managed to maintain, to keep it a secret for thirty years until until I discovered it by finishing my first film. So I brought the news of my father's double life to to my mom uh, after thirty years of uh, long distance uh, mon monogamous marriage or, or what she thought was a monogamous marriage. Um, so, so this of course is a very very delicate thing because. Um, there's a lot of anger, a lot of shame, and um, in the first instance, you would want to to put my dad out, uh, my dad out as a as a bad guy for for lying. Um, um, so what what I tried to do when speaking to people about past and memory was was not so much to, or, or the aim was just to to have to have to give them an opportunity to share their perspective of what, what they were experiencing because everybody was in a in a in a in a in a unwanted situation somehow um and um and I felt it was important for everyone to acknowledge that yes this happened and I was part of it uh, and that's um so acknowledgement of, of your own actions is, is what you know um could um uh, possibly help you move forward. Um so that was um my approach to to when addressing the past, it wasn't just for for the sake of of story or nostalgia, but for finding how did this particular person experience this moment in the history of the family. Thank you, and Ahmed. Um, obviously, for you, your film is a bit different because you're you're actually filming what what's happening in front of you, and uh, the conflict between your f uh, siblings and your parents. Um, and I was wondering how much you might have felt that the fact you were there and filming them has maybe influenced what was happening and all these kind of conversations and arguments they were having. And also, I guess for you, it must have brought maybe um, a lot back from the past and from your own upbringing and, 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 yeah, and the relationship you had with your family before. Uh, I left home, I left my family at the age of 13 and then I moved alone. Uh, against their consent, so I moved from one city to another and then from one country to another and when I arrived to like in my 30s and I had a seven years relationship and I was just about to have this dilemma of like are we going to make a family or not and I realized that uh, I mean there are certain things in the past that they are still in the past which we still carry with them and I still carry it with them. I still carry them with me. And then when the situation of my sister and my brother reached through the telephone, even though I didn't know them at all since I left, I knew them just by little things. I realized that it's it was the same thing happening to them twenty years later and going there I first tried to film myself as well. I mean, I didn't know that it was going to be a documentary. That's 
question that kept. Uh, I was there and I was saying like, what am I doing here? Like, why am I filming? Uh, at any rate, I didn't want it to be in the film just because of this question, because of the past, because I think the past was the present and I wanted just the present to be the present. And you think being there might have changed what's, um, what was going on in your family when you were filming that? That's the question when I, uh, when I brought my siblings to see the film in a festival and then we had conversations and they asked themselves and asked me, did, they really, did the presence of the camera with me as a brother in there change their behaviors? According to Mahmoud, he's, yeah, it did. Uh, I mean, for Zainab, it didn't change anything. That's what she told me. But well, I think it changed for all of us. It's just like we can't deny it. The presence of a camera with someone and maybe an outcome of a meaning out of the lived daily events, yeah, it changed. It changed a bit. And I had a question about deciding to be on camera in your own film. So Jida and uh, Sam, you are both like main protagonist in your films. So you touched a bit upon it, Ahmed, but so you decided not to in the end. Can you, can you expand on that, why you decide to be there or not? It's, well, it's not the first of my films that I've been in. Um, I think, I think it's a, about presenting myself as an equally unreliable narrator as everyone else in the film. And to do that, I kind of had to be in the film that there's a, um, I've always, if I'm honest, I've always struggled with documentaries that present uh, objectivity, <laughs> you know, that, it, that, 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 that feels like a, uh, a slight dishonesty, that, that, that you're never objective, that at the moment you, you hold up a camera, and the moment you choose which shots to put in a film, you've constructed a story. But for, particularly for this film, because, because the truth is so contested in the film, and I have yet another truth from all the other <laughs> people in it, I, I didn't want to um, be the person saying, this is the truth. And I think if I was just behind the camera for my film, no, <laughs> I think I would have been doing that, which is th th the other reason, because I, I originally started writing it as a fiction. Um, and that was the, the other reason I moved away from writing it as a, dr as a fictional film into documentary, because it became apparent it was, you know, j just members of my family finding out I was a fiction were, were kind of like, well, who, who are you to, to be the one that writes our family story, you know, so I wanted to present it very much as this is my version of the story and here I am exploring it and you can explore it with me. So I'm the central character and you get to have my experience, but it's just my experience of it, you know. Um, being in there myself, um, it felt, yeah, I, I, I didn't think too much about it. I didn't, I didn't like, um, Stress myself too much about it. It felt like a, a very direct and um, and I guess open way to 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 navigate through the story, to to guide the audience through the story. And then and then it's also just my style of, of filming, um, at least as a director. As a, I'm I'm kind of, I'm so far I'm a bit of a one man band. I go out. I have my sound equipment. I have my camera. So me meeting people is always is always it's always clear that that the people. That I'm watching are somehow relating to me, like my presence. I, I don't. I don't try to disguise my 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 presence or or the confrontation or the. Um, so um, so yeah. It, it, to me, it felt like like uh, um, uh, not easy, but but maybe an open and an an honest way to try to navigate through the uh, the many different stories, um, and then to help keep. Uh, remind the audience that it's it's my perspective and I'm I'm the one doing the journey. Um, um, also, to, to keep that in mind, because when you see the film, you you see that many of the protagonists are not necessarily. It's not easy for them to participate. Um, um, so somehow, it's it's I think it's 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 good to to remind the audience that that it's it's me trying to achieve something and it's not necessarily them trying to do anything. If I could add something, no, it's just like um, 
I had like 10 days essay of with a cinematographer and it was weird to bring someone after three years to be filmed. And I realized like she was filming me and when I was watching during the editing room, I was watching myself saying things that are really, I just couldn't find myself authentic in that world. It's just like I was saying things, all very moralist things that I know right and there are universal rights and a mother should not treat her daughter like that. And I realized that I wasn't part of it uh, emotionally. I wasn't part of this world. So I couldn't be present as an image either. Mm -hmm. That was one of the other reasons. But you are present in your film, I think, as well. Just to say, you're very much <laughs> Thank you. Present. I mean, behind the camera <laughs> present, yeah. yeah. But but to me, I, I wouldn't say that, like you you just briefly said that that uh, that I'm the main protagonist of my film, and I, I don't see it like that at all. Um, my intention was that my mother was supposed to be the the, the main character, and then my 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 half brothers. Um, but the but the relationship uh, and and and, the, and the, the the perspective is always mine as either a son or a distant brother or um, yeah. So 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 this relationship I think is was important for me to establish. Um, but but uh, but um, yeah, in my in my mind, it's it's a film about my my mother and my brothers. And um, Sam and Ahmed, you've also you've worked in fiction as well. Mm -hmm. And so, can you maybe? Um, and I think Jida, you've worked maybe not as a director, but you've also worked on fiction films as well. Can you say for you that also filming people you know, and what is the main difference really that that there is maybe about? You know, making a film with people you know personally very well, in, even in the filming process, that you would or wouldn't do with maybe people you don't know, or what what really happens there. F filming fiction is entirely, <laughs> entirely different. It's um, or even filming documentaries with someone you yeah. don't know that personally well. Yeah, um, I mean, filming fiction. There's a, this layer of protection. You have a you have a responsibility to your to your actors to treat them well, and I, uh, my, my fiction was with, with actually quite a young woman, and so there was still, there was still ethical responsibilities. But it's, it, 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 it's, you're working on the whole with professionals who've, you know, who know what they're coming to and, and can detach. You know, whereas uh, filming your family is so <coughs> emotionally complex, <laughs> you know, and um, conti you're continually having to or certainly I was continually having to question and thinking about what I was doing and why I was doing it and, and, and why film it and why, you know, make public the private, you know. Uh. Did, did, you set did you set boundaries or...? <laughs> we set boundaries and I continually pushed them, <laughs> which is how they ended up in a studio watching themselves <laughs> being, uh, being, being acted out on, you know, by, by actors. So, so we started off that they both agreed just to record audio. <laughs> and then gradually, gradually um, as it felt more okay. And, and, and I mean, obviously the benefit of working with your family is, is uh, well, with my mum and dad was the level of trust, you know, and I think they always trusted that I was trying to do something that was, um, I, was I, I was trying to be, I don't think fair is the word, but, but truthful, emotionally truthful. Um, I, I, and I think when you're working with uh, contributors who, who aren't your family, then you have to do a lot more work in that front. But, but, but with your family, you're going to have to, I'm going to have to live with whatever the impact of this film is with them, you know, and, and, and I think maybe every documentary filmmaker should <laughs> make a film about someone that they're going to, to, to live with to see what, what that impact is. And I think it does make you approach documentary differently with everybody, you know, with care. Yeah. I mean, I had a s first when I went there and it was like two and a half months and I realized that because I come from fiction, I try to have camera angles and I try to have like, I don't know, I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. And the moment that I realized what was going on in front of the camera, I began to drop the camera because I couldn't 
really handle the emotional impact on me. And then I began to, because they work during the day and they come in the evening, so most of the shootings are uh, in the evening. So during the day I was watching, I was like, I, I can't really do anything with these images. And I couldn't, I couldn't accept the images that I, I had shot. And then I accepted one thing that I said, that it's going to be a very precise point of view. And I will sit in one place, and I'll take Zainab, my sister's point of view, and Mahmoud, and I'll let my emotions direct me with my camera. And it was as easy to, to, to say than apply it. And then I began to realize that I was doing lots of mistakes. Just the camera was becoming heavy whenever I felt like oppressed and I was cutting their head off. And I didn't, for every person there's like Nezahat, the girl who stayed at home, and I was free to move, I, would, I could go whenever I wanted to. And then I realized that to be able to understand and film her, I needed to stay. So I stayed, even these are like before the COVID, I stayed for two months, I haven't got out of the, the apartment and I was just like with her. And I realized that there is a different language, which is not fiction or documentary for me. It's just something, a different language that comes just because of this relation with, with the characters that I had, with the real people that they were living. So with every, with every person, with Nezahat, I was heavy. With Zainab, I was very close and I moved in around. And with Mahmoud, I was like, he, he's a very enigmatic person. So I was keeping my distance and I realized that I was pushing everyone to the edge of the camera, uh, camera frame, frames. And I knew that they, they were mistakes, but I began to love my mistakes. Uh, and I realized that uh, everyone was telling me like the TV channels and everywhere. I just pitched it after, uh, after the first two and a half months and they were saying like, we can't use that, not even in TV. So, all right. <laughs> uh, I was pitching in, in Barcelona, and there was this the, the Netflix uh, coordinator, and he was there, like, and they showed the images two and a half minutes, and they said, like, what do you think? He, I don't remember his name, but what do you think? He said, like, this is exactly in Netflix what we don't like to buy, and we don't like. It's just like, all right. And, I, I continued with my own mistakes, even though it felt that they were not mistakes. And now it is considered in several places as a fiction, but I've never really uh, fictionalized even the steps. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it, because I had this relation. It's uh, interesting that, because when I watch a film, I noticed that some of the composition sometimes was was off and um, and I was thinking that me as a camera person what would I do in that situation if I if I found myself in a situation where maybe I drifted off and the composition goes off I would want to correct it immediately I, I, I noticed the mistake so I found that in your in your scenes and I don't know if we're talking about the same scenes um, but um, uh, I found it uh, convincing and, and confident that the camera just stayed like that uh, with with the protagonists on the edge of the frames or um, um, yes yeah, so I found it was a, it was a very confident and, and strong visual style so I'm happy to hear that <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also what gave you, you, your presence in the film I think we got a sense of you behind the camera from, yeah. from those mistakes so yeah. yeah I mean I was just gonna add as well that I think uh, with my film that actually quite a lot of it I had two wonderful female documentary filmmakers filming. And I think my fiction experience was really helpful for directing those two in advance, really. When we were shooting the reconstructions, there weren't many, well, I didn't really have any opportunities to, to discuss with them <laughs> what they were going to film. So there was a lot of discussion beforehand and that, that changes things as well when you, when you give the camera to someone else and then, and then allow things to unfold, which meant then, in the edit, I saw what was unfolding through two other documentary filmmakers' eyes, and that was that was absolutely fascinating. <laughs> you know? 
Jide, do you want to do you want to add anything? Um, well, all I can say is I, I work professionally as a camera person on on other projects. So I work with directors both in fiction and and uh, documentary, and it's certainly a very different thing when I, when working with my own family as a, as a camera person or a, and and a, a director. I guess I have the benefit that I can somehow easily find a, a nice looking picture. Um, but to me, the difference is when when I work on other projects with with protagonists that are not related directly to me, uh, uh, that I'm not at the beginning of the shoot at least very familiar with. Um, I'm, I'm able to to think more. I'm, I'm able to think <laughs> uh, more uh, visually and and kind of uh, imagine some kind of a cinematic sequence. Um, obviously, I'm 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 paying attention to, to the protagonist and their private space and, and, and you know, sensing their energy, but I'm able to, 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 to create imagery like, and float around them somehow. But with my, in this particular film, with my, with my mom, my dad, my brothers, um, I'm not able to think like that because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so much in, 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 yeah, just looking, it's on, uncertain whether they, they feel comfortable, uncertain how to start the conversation. There's so many things going on in, in myself as, as the brother or as the son that, that the cinematographer is not really, like he can only just push the button. Um, so that's, that's, that's something I noticed at least, um, that that's my, the cinematographer of my film didn't really have much, uh, much of a playground uh, because um, uh, it was often a quite uh, complex conversations to, to navigate through. And not, I'm not only observing what they are saying, what they're doing. I'm also contemplating about my own uh, role because I'm I'm also part of it. And uh, whatever I say in response is also um, some. I'm kind of filming myself as well. Thank you. And um, your films uh, deal with quite painful subjects or memories. Um, were you worried about um, how the film and your families were going to be perceived, and um, how how did you handle that? And how did they react when they when they saw your films? Do you want me to start with that? Um, um, so obviously the world premiere is tonight, <laughs> so I'm still kind of uh, waiting for the response. I know there was a press screening yesterday. I saw one person from that press screening. So, so, uh, so that's a strange place to answer that question from I you know it, it is nerve-wracking as to how I, I know how how I feel the film portrays my family but um, yeah so but my parents have both seen the film and in fact are, are in the film watching the film <laughs> um, and um, were involved in fact they, they watched subsequent edits of the film and there were lots of conversations about the cut you know uh, that were helpful you know, both to the film and to us as a family, I would say. So, does that answer the question? I kind of feel like I've forgotten the question and the answer. I, I guess it's, it is difficult to talk about because it's, um, that, that's the place where, you know, you, you, you don't quite know what you've done to them. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's an important story and actually, and, and, and so do both my parents, but, but, um, you never know how people are gonna, what what people are gonna take from it, you know. So yeah. <laughs> so how, how how did yours go? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, f for me, I needed hope. I really wanted, even though the events were in really. Um, heavy and I needed hope and I realized that we could get it at the end of, at the end of, I didn't know that it was going to 10 years or five years or three years, but I thought that if we work together with my brother and sisters, uh, we could have a hopeful resolution and at the end of the film, there is this hope that I hope everyone feels, feels it. I recently showed them the film and and they took the parts that they are present in there. They said like, uh, 
Zainab said she she loves her courage even though in real life she doesn't feel that every day and she feels like she saw the film in two presentations in the cinema and I, I sent her a link and she began to see it almost every day and gave me lots of feedbacks about herself in a strange way. It's just like it's it's not painful to watch it anymore for them, for me. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think my film is also still in, in, in the process, or my family is also still in the process with this film. Um, um, many protagonists, uh, the main ones, my mom and my two half-brothers um, over in, in the Americas, and or in, in North America. Um, I guess when I started the project, I also had like an, a bit of a naive hope that it will somehow help the family, um, you know, understand and come together somehow. Um, and I also only started filming at a time when I felt that the worst of the drama was over, like the worst of the, the hurts was over, and people were, were able to reflect calmly about, about the past. Uh, but obviously when I started the process of filming, everything blew up again, and, and um, it became even more complex. Um, and I think for my mom now to watch the film, um, um, it's a film that that somehow it, it tends to lean more to her side of the story. It's 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 it tends to be more sympathetic to 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 her story, um, and uh, I th I think w she finds it, and we all find it awkward to to that people are watching this and 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 thinking that or seeing that you know this is this happened to us. This is our our family, um, but many people relate, and I think my mom also um, understands that. And um, what I do worry about. Though is um, is because I experienced that with my first film as well. Is when the narrative, the story of the film, starts becoming the memory of okay. what actually happened, uh, and um, that is uh, that sometimes uh, confuses me, yeah. <laughs> um, because people were there and lived their lives, and and they said something at some point on tape, and I put it down in in the film, and maybe they forgot the context. Uh, and then that becomes a new memory of that conversation, of that moment. Um, I've, 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 I just noticed this uh, with, with the last film, and I'm seeing it again with, the, with this new film. Um, but um, yeah, um, that, I don't know how to, how to solve that. <laughs> um, but, um, but, and then my, my half-brothers have seen, have seen the film, and they were both quite touched by it. And I think it helped them also to, to have some, not necessarily closure, but to somehow um, um, deal with with how they how they feel uh, about uh, our father. Um, um, the only person that hasn't uh, seen or related to it yet is my father himself. Um, he's not interested, and but he 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 has given me his blessing to complete the project, and he's aware that it exists. And um, but he doesn't need to be part of part of it now. So I was just going to say that that sensation of the film almost becoming the new truth is yeah. I think what prompted me to make my, my film because yeah. I'd made previous personal films and it's, yeah, mm. it's kind of whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think it's something we all need to watch now that we're all making so many recordings yeah. either it, with photographs or, or, or videos of our lives, you know. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, you might have um, questions yourself in the audience, so if you do, please raise your hand. Yeah, there is a question at the back. It, it was, my film was made over many, many years, um, and, and it was very, very gradual. So I, we only ever did what they felt comfortable doing. So there were, no, there were, were never hard no's, and I, I think I never I kind of, tried never to get myself into a position where I might get a hard no. <laughs> you know? um, although, actually, when I asked them to do the reconstructions, I, I was quite surprised at my mum's openness to it. Um, so, how do you... I don't, I don't think... I don't think there was persuading, but I think maybe just my sheer kind of perseverance with the project was like the dripping <laughs> you know, 
I don't think I don't think I wore them down, but I just think it it, it became inevitable <laughs> that this film was, was you know that, that was going to be made. But but I also think they really, I think part of the process of the, of the film was them understanding why it was so important to me, which was like the whole story of the film in a way is like this is an unresolved issue, and this is an issue like there there are things in our family that have not been acknowledged, you know. So to, if that answers that question, how did you? <laughs> How did you get them to agree? <laughs> in my case, it was, in a strange way, it was never really a problem because when I went there and the camera, they, 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 the community, they lived their life and all they wanted to, in a strange way, someone to listen to them. And every day, every time the camera was on, like, they were becoming more personal, even though we never speak about personal stuff. And camera and the person behind the camera was a listener and they wanted to express themselves. I never had the difficulty to to convince them to talk or to initiate anything. It was very surprising for me as well. I didn't know that either. I mean, I didn't know the outcome of my images. I was just shooting their daily life and when one and a half years later, when it becomes, I edit 20 minutes and I began to show it, I realized that it was going to be a film and a story with everything. Then I asked them and I told them, this is going to be that. And then they said like, okay. But after that moment, it began to change. I think I created, the moment that I told them about this, I created a sort of expectations uh, that's a, I didn't know. I don't know how to deal with it, but I think I used most of the rushes that I've shot before. Afterwards, there was a sort of expectations, and they were acting or not acting, but they were like they were heading to a direction like it can be a film, and I didn't like it. Uh, in in my case, I um, so I had. A, made a documentary before based just focused on my father and that was my first film so that was that, that film happened very like easily and wasn't many big questions it just kind of just happened but then it became a, a film that was fairly successful went to festivals and won some awards so um, I think that's already changed uh, how my family related to my camera um, because I had always been taking pictures and I, like I'm a photographer I'm always behind the camera but after this, the first film came out and became a public thing. Um, my camera, it felt different. I, I could I could feel that they were they were they had a different energy towards my camera. Um, so when I started the second film, I I only asked my my mom because I thought she would be the main character, and my my brother. Th those two was were the ones I asked for per permission whether they would be willing to participate in in a film. Uh, where I spent a lot of time with them and 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 film film with them, um, I didn't I didn't at that time I wasn't thinking that I would I would involve my dad and I wasn't um, really aware of of an, an, another secret half brother of mine that that shows up in the film. Um, so um, uh, so yeah so so they they were they were open because they, at some somehow I guess they trusted that I, that I would do something <laughs> reasonable with it. Um, but when once the filming started, I could sense this 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 um, different energy towards my camera because they knew the the power of it from the first film. Um, so so they were not as uh, given or, or open as I expected. Um, and but I still sensed that since they agreed and and the doors were open, but I had to like I had to keep them open. I had to like I had to. Keep doing things in order to, to um, because my my brother he would have me come over to Canada and have me spend time there, but he wouldn't necessarily want to engage in the questions that I that I had. Um, so I, I met a lot of no's along 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 the along the road, um, and that is what the film ultimately displays. Um, um, I, I I think it's a series of like the, the, a series of protagonists that are wanting some kind of healing, wanting some kind of assistance in, in talking about things, but um, they are not really able to somehow because it wasn't done in our family. They're not trained to be open about their emotions. Um, 
So, so yeah, it's a film in which like that people want to be part of it, but there's a lot of uh, obstructions and, and nose along the uh, along along the road. I don't know. If I, I'd forgotten. I did. I did have a really clear no, <laughs> which was from my sister, who who from the outset didn't want to participate. And in fact, I originally wanted to co-direct it with her and proposed that. And that was a, a very clear no, and she. She's, she's agreed to have her avatar in the film. There's, there's a little girl playing her, but yeah, she definitely didn't want her story on the screen in, in a real way. For me, each of those ethical questions becomes an examination of myself. <laughs> so why have I chosen? to do this, why have I chosen to, to, to you know, I, I, and some choices are, aren't choices you make consciously, I think that's always true when you're filmmaking, that, that there's a, a large proportion which is instinctive, so for me I, I noticed after doing the first set of interviews that I had chosen to interview my dad on his own with me behind the camera, but when it was my mum I had chosen to put my... To, to bring in a cam someone to, behind the camera and ha be in in the frame with my mum, and it, you know it's only as you it's, it's in the edit you start those choices become conscious and then you are forced to understand your relationship to the story, you know. And so it's um, I think I think first person filmmaking can only work if if you are being rigorous with your own with yourself about everything. Do you know what I mean? And, and examining yourself, that, that the moment you, the moment you enter into it and, and don't continually ask questions of yourself, there is a danger of it becoming indulgent. Mm -hmm. I couldn't deal with it. I mean, with the ethics, I couldn't. In the editing room, after three years, during three years, I've shot and edited. I kept asking the same question, and it just in time, I, I'm not as conscious as Sam about my decisions when I when I began to film and during. But in the editing room, as you said, I began to be conscious of all the decisions, and I don't know. I began to have gray hair. <laughs> It's just I, I I couldn't deal with it, and I still have lots of questions about it. At the end, I began to detach myself from images, and that's how I could finish the film. But ethically, I don't know. I, I can't answer to that. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't conscious at the beginning. <laughs> no, I, Sorry. I was running towards gunfire. <laughs> I was just like running into this massive, you know, I was just driven to make the film. So it's only through the process through, of making the film that, that you know, I'm able to answer all these questions now. But you find all the right words to put it to, that's why I thought that. <laughs> I, I think it's knowing that I have my premiere tomorrow, um, tonight, oh. you're like, you're kind of preempting the question. But I mean, I think that's part of making the film though, and it is, is to put something in front of an audience. You immediately have to, it, you start that in the edit room, you have to try and take the seat of the audience. And then that means you're looking at your family yourself in a, from a different perspective, it forces you to do that, you know. And if I think if I hadn't made the film, I'd still be, I'd still be in this world where I was hi hanging on to my narrative so tightly. I hope this is recorded so I could use it in another place. Chita, <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to add something? Mm. I felt often that in my case was also a, a bit of a minefield or many different themes that I had to to be aware of um, black, white, Europe, Africa, um, culture clash or whatever, uh, and um, uh, but I couldn't. I you, you can't uh, work when when you have to when you're afraid of like. I just decided that this is my story, like, and and I can tell it uh, the way I feel it, and and there's a risk of of. Um, of misrepresentation somehow, or there's a there's a risk of misunderstanding, um, but uh, it wasn't in my like I didn't feel I didn't know that I had to, the tools to make uh, the film in a language that would be respectful to all and perfect for all. Uh, I just relied um, that that it is 
is it's my family story and I'm part of my family, so it's my story, which is why I chose to open the film with with uh, with my couple of questions, and then that's what guides you through the and you know, navigates you through. And it's a film where I travel a lot, so it, the film is like jumping from place to place. So you you, you do sense this this somebody is searching for something, um, and that somebody is obviously obviously me. Um, so I just rely on the fact that you know this. It's okay to have questions as a person, you know. Yeah, I, I think what documentary allows is to present the complexity of different positions. And I think you can do that within, within, within fiction. But I think if you're doing that from your own story, you're... <sighs> you're less likely to be challenged on your version, you know. So I, I, if I'm honest, I've been to the cinema and watched films and felt this is the filmmaker's family story. And if I'm, again, if I'm honest, felt annoyed <laughs> because I felt like, well, in particular, the portrayal of the mother <laughs> is, is often out, you know. So, so, so... Um, but but you know so so I, I um, yeah I I, I I wanted to avoid avoid that I think it, yeah documentary as I say uh, uh, allows for that complexity and I I do think there's I think it's a privilege to think you're being objective you know I think anyone who's not um, you know kind of I guess to, to, to say it like, you know, Western white middle class male knows that there isn't an objective story because what's being presented as an objective story isn't for, for actually a lot of people. You know, it's being presented as the objective truth. You know, and I think there's a, day, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, your question is a good question because it opens up so much discussion. But, but that's not to say I don't think you can't do it through fiction. And I have seen, I think, marriage story. Uh, is a great fiction film that presents two sides of a divorce in a way that feels truthful. And, and I think good fiction is when... The, and that was based on, I think, a real story. I think good fiction is when the filmmaker is... If they're using their own material, which most fiction filmmakers are, um, that, that, uh, it's, um, that, it, that, that you're equally rigorous, you know, because... Telling stories is about finding emotional truth. That's that's the whole that's the whole thing that we're trying to do, and in so doing, take us all on a journey where we try and work out what the hell's going on. You know. Thanks. If I could add yeah. something, yeah. just like I've been here in this documentary and fiction definitions, I don't understand the difference. I, I really don't understand the difference and I don't know at what point we could define what we do as fiction or documentary. Is it based on the reality? And I don't know. I mean, you, you answered very well. I still will use it probably. <laughs> it's yours. Huh? <laughs> Great. Um, so Jada's film, When the Farm Goes Flame" is the second screening is playing as we speak. Um, Sam is having her world premiere uh, tonight, The Wolf Suit, if you still um, haven't seen it. And Ahmet, you've got also your film screening tonight and in the next few days, so you can catch up with these films um, if you haven't seen them. They're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. It was, uh, it was great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.